So what does that mean, Vayita Hadar? Vayita Hadar always means that they liked the idea, they accepted it. In other words, Yosef just came with the whole plan. Vayita Hadar, they were masculine. They were, they were not Meicha, but they accepted it. They, they, they agreed. So the Pasuk is saying that Parai and his Avadim and all his Avadim agreed. Okay. So now who are these all Avadim? Kol Avde Parai. And why is it significant, significant that they agree? So the Avde Parai is something, the Avde Parai as a group appears, appears very often in the story of Parai the time. One of them is in Parash Vayichi, Parak Nun Pasuk Zayin, where it talks about Yosef going to bury his father. Perak Nun Pasuk Zayin says, V'ya'alu itoi kol avdei farai ziknei v'esei. So the avdei farai doesn't just mean nobodies. Avdei farai ziknei v'esei. So these are his officials. Avdei farai's officials. Also in Be'ira, by the Arve. Right. V'yomu avdei farai elov, ad mosa yezol on the Mokish, so they're his advisors. Exactly. So... It's possible also, meaning in the beginning of Parashat Mikis, we have Parashat calls all the Khatumim, all the Chachomim, and the Sahamash can come. So it's all his court that's trying to help him. And finally, these are his wise men, as we discussed, and we'll discuss further. And, and um, there is counsel, there is Yoyatzim. So he has to, Yosef's idea has to um, be accepted by Parai and his court, and his, and his Kenyan. Okay, and this is what it says like this. It says in Tehillim, Parakof Hay, that when um, Yosef was released from jail, <clears throat> so Tehillim Kof Hay, Pasik Chof Aleph, Somay Adoy Nevesay, Moshe Bechal Kinyonay, Lesser Sorov Ben Nafshoy, Uzikain of Yechakim. So Yosef, Lesser Sorov Ben Nafshoy, Uzikain of Yechakim. Yosef had the power to, to lock up the Sorry Parai as he wished. And he was machkim the zikenim. So first of all, just you see this passage that zikenim and sorim are synonymous, and you see that also before in in, in Parashas Balak, where it talks about the zikne moyav, and the next passage they call the sorry moyav. So zikenim and sorim are synonymous. So the avdei parai who are the zikne beisai, they are the sorim and the zikenim. The zikenim yichakim is that Yosef was wiser than all the sorim and all the zikenim. That's the next passage. The power said, "Hanim tochas ha eshes shavuach likim bay," meaning in this pasuk, in pasuk lamid zayin. So vayitav adav beni fire beni chalav adav. Those are the zikne beisa who are the sorim, and in the next pasuk he tells them basically that they are smart. That Yosef is smarter than all of them put together. Well, put together, Kapani is smarter than all of them, and that's the kinev yichakim. Okay, the kinev yichakim. The Bible says it's like they're all his tamidim. They're all his tamidim. They're all them from him. So really, these two psukim, pasuk lamed zayin and pasuk lamed ches, we have to read them together. In pasuk lamed zayin, the avodim still rank; they still matter. Yosef's idea has to be accepted and is accepted by Pari and kol avodav. But then the next pasuk, Pari tells us avodim that they're out of the picture because because there's no we're not going to find anyone that's worth by it. From now on. And from now on, the conversation is only between Yosef and Para. And he puts and he puts Yosef in charge and higher than everyone else. Right? Meaning, so the Pesukim go together. In Pasuk Lamed Zayin, his Avodim still matter. And Pasuk Lamed Ches, he tells his Avodim, he's superior to all of you. And basically, you're out of a job. You're not relevant anymore. Okay? And well, I'll show you that very clearly. Much clearer. So we spoke about this in Yishai Perik Yud Tes. There's a theme, and this theme we have really in, in the Makis also. There's a theme about who are the smart, who are the wise people? Are the Chartumim Mitzrayim, the real Chachamim, or not? Okay, this idea. And, and that starts really in Parshas Miketz, where you have this competition. Chartumim Mitzrayim and Chachamim couldn't figure it out. The only one who can figure it out is the one who's speaking in the name of Hashem. So like the true Eitz and the true Chachma is not Chachamim Mitzrayim, it's really Chachamim Hashem. And that's what it says in Yishai Parakut test two, that um, that the sorry Mitzrayim. Let's take a look at pasuk Yud Aleph. The sorry Tzoyan, the Yoyetzi Paroi, are Avilim. They're not Chachamim. They don't know what Yoatz Hashem. 
because Hashem gave them a Ruach Ivim. So the meaning this idea that the Mitzrayim right, thinks they're very smart. They think they're very smart, and they really are very smart. But when Hashem has some plan against them, they can't figure it out. They don't know what's coming, and that indicates that they're not as smart as they think. And that there's a Ruach Hashem that um, above them, beyond them. Okay, that's Yishai Perkutas. Um, good. Now, I want to read just, we're going to explain the Hemshech even more so, but I want to read, focus on Pasuk Lamed Ches. Hanim will we find, Hanim will we be able to find, Paris said, will we be able to find Isha Shavuach Alikimpai? Now, when you say, will we be able to find it, it's mashma, that really we should be searching, right? It's mashma, there's a need to search for one. But if we were to search, we're not going to find, right? We're not going to find it. And the Medrash says that, Afilu, even if we go from one end of the world to the other, says the Medrash, we won't find such a person. That's the point of the Pasuk. Hanim Tzach Hazai, meaning, L'chaira, it's much like this, L'chaira, the need arose for them to start looking, right? But we're not going to find it. So why is that follow? I mean, what does that mean? Why do we have to follow? Because, why do we have to start searching? Because what happened was, the whole point of this parak of this whole competition, not the whole point, I'm saying the point of this Yosef being better than everyone else, is that all the Sarei Parei, the Chachmei Yosef Parei, proved themselves incapable and not able to live up to their job. So we have a problem here. That, Yo- that Parei had his dream and he needs Eitzah and no one could give it to him. So Parei's hold, all the Chachmei Yitzrayim, all the Yosef Mitzrayim have proven themselves not up to the task of, being, of doing their job. And so that follows from Pasuk Lamed Zayin, because That means Yosef came with an idea that no one else was able to figure out. After Yosef came with his idea, no one had any objection. They had nothing to say. So, so what function do they serve? They have no function anymore. The whole, the whole court of Parai has no function anymore. The Mela, it's time to start looking for new Yayatim. But we don't have to look, because the best Yayats in the world is right here in front of us. So that's, that's the Hemshech of the Pesukim. And he tells Zavodim, you guys are out of a job. Time to look. But I don't even have to look because it, it is, it, he's the best possible. And that's again, being the Shai Parakir test, that the Chachmim Mitzrayim don't know what they're doing, it's the one who has the Ruach Hashem. And also, just a, one diak over here, that he said, And there in the Shai Parakir test, he talks about the. the Losing their abilities, so take a look at Pasik Tezayin. Yishai Perak Yutes Pasik Tezayin says, "By Yom Ahu Yim Etzayim Kanoshim, they're going to become Kanoshim because they don't have the Eitz, they don't know what's flying, they know what's coming, so they can be afraid. They're going to be Kanoshim." So Pari says, "Here we have an Ish. The Ish is Shiruchali Kimbo. He's the Ish, and you guys are not even an Ish because you because if you can't predict what's coming, you're going to be afraid Kanoshim." Okay. That is a, a Hakdom Katsara. Now we're getting into the real interesting stuff. Okay, that's Pashup Shat, really. But now I want to focus on this Nimza. Okay, so Yosef Sapari so says we have to look. We have to look for someone, but the, 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 the search is over before we even start because we're not going to find someone better, right? Okay, so now I'll slow down a little bit also. Now go to Daniel Perak Aleph. Then there's a story in Daniel Perak Aleph, and Vanetta captures. Yehuda and he and he takes captives and he selects um, some of them to, to, to teach them wisdom so that they could stand in his court. And there were four of them from the Zerah Malucha, Daniel, Hanani Mishal and Azariah. And they uh, refused to eat the king's food, and then they became Tachamim. Specifically, Daniel, mostly Daniel, and he was able to interpret dreams. I think you were here for that year, no? Oh. I spoke about that. That Yosef didn't eat the food of Kiyam Halacha Mashahu Eichel, but Yosef, if you say Mara, that Pasuk is like Daniel, who didn't eat the food of the king, and still he looked healthy and well, and because of that, he was able to be Pesach Haloimis, it's in the Dukim Daniel Perakalaf, and so too Yosef was able to be Pesach Haloimis in the king's court because he didn't take the lechem. But there's a lot of parallels between Yosef and, and Daniel. Obviously, he's interpreting dreams. But I want to show you now um, something that relates to this Pasuk. The, look, the looking for a wise man and, and finding him in Yosef. We have the same thing 
and finding him in Daniel. But take a look at Daniel Perak Aleph Pasik Yud Tes. So this is after the training period and studying for three years. The Pasik says, So they're looking for wise men, and they weren't found anyone um, like that. And the next Pasik says also, we'll talk about that soon. It's something very significant about that. Okay? But um, yeah, so that's the 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 nimtzah kazeh, the looking for a wise man and finding him in Yosef. We have the same notion over there in finding the wise, um, the wisest people, Daniel, Hanan, and Mishal, and Azai. Okay, and there also Agav it says that they were supposed to be taught. Take a look at pasuk Hey, supposed to be taught shanim shalish for three years. Umiktsasam. This is in Daniel. Perakal pasuk Hey to teach them. Shonim Shalosh, Umiktsasam Ya'an Dudof Nehemelech. Umiktsasam means at the end of the three years, the Psalm of says, like as you see in Pasuk Yud Ches and Daniel, Ulumiktsas Hayamim. So, Vahim Miketz Shnasayim Yamim, that's in the third year. I don't know if that's the same thing. Yosef proved to the king how wise he was, by being Pasuk Yud Chalonis, and the Miktsas Hayamim, after the three years of training, they were ready. Daniel proved how he was wise, and Velo Nimtza, someone as wise as Daniel. Okay, and it says, so, so Pare said, Hanim tzokhazem. we cannot find such a person in the whole world, right? If we'd go from one end of the world to the world, one on, one end of the world to the other, says the Medrash, we wouldn't find someone like this, so we don't have to even bother looking. And that's what it says also in Daniel, Perek Beis, Pasuk Yud, in Perek Beis, Pasuk Yud, the, the wise man told the king, Lo Isai Enash al Yabeshto, there's not a man on the whole earth who could tell the king his dream. So that's an imtzuk as a yesh hashem wachol kimbait, but Daniel did, right? Daniel did, and Agav the Ibn Ezra learns that Perak Aleph, when the king discovered how wise they were, it's after Perak Beis, when Daniel interpreted the dream. That's the story of Daniel. We interpreted the dream, and he even told the dream. He told the king the dream that the king wouldn't tell. That's when the king knew how wise he was. But al kapanah there it says in Perak Beis, there's not a person on the whole earth who could do this. So that's an imtzuk as a yesh hashem wachol kimbait. Says the Medrash, we can go from one end of the world to the other. There's no such person on the whole planet, okay, like we have in Daniel. So now I have a kasha on Pari. Pari said, we cannot find Hanim Tzoch HaZeh Eshe Will we find such a person, right? So I have 11 kashas on this, maybe 12. What about Yaakov? Yeah? And what about the brothers? It's a good question, right? Hanim Tzoch HaZeh, so we'll go from one end of the world to the other, we won't find such a person. It's not true. It's not true. Some very, a lot of people do work You said Pari didn't know? We'll yeah, so you could say Pari didn't know. Yeah, of course you could say Pari didn't know, but then you have to ask the question, What's the point of the Pasuk telling us something that's not true? I'm not saying it's Shrek, but then you have to learn that up and say, okay, so why is the Torah telling us something that's not true? And Pyre made a mistake, and if Pyre didn't know something that was true, that probably has some ramifications for something that happened further. Where do we see that this matters? But I want to say that actually it was true. It was true. Because the Pasuk says about Yaakov, when he, when he uh, reunited with Yosef, right? Right, where's the Pasuk? The end of Perak Memhei. Vatachi Ruach Yaakov Avim. And Targum says, Shras Ruach Nevuah. That's when he had the Ruach Alekim came back to Yaakov. Okay, so Yaakov is not, doesn't have the Ruach Alekim, right? Okay, what about the brothers? What about the brothers? They're great people, right? So now to understand why, the, why, the, why they don't count, Turn to Micha Perak Beis. Okay, Micha is, I'm sorry, Micha Perak Gimel. Micha is after Yaina, before Nachum, and Treyasar, which is after Yechazka, before Tehillim. <laughs> anyway, so Micha Perak Gimel. Micha Perak Gimel, I've shown Tarichas uh, many times, <clears throat> the in the beginning of Ayeshev, mostly in Ayeshev, is that Micha Perak Gimel is directed against the brothers who sold Yosef. Okay? Now, just Maimar Hamuska, why the brothers sold Yosef, which you have to understand. Why the brothers sold Yosef? Because, Pasuk says, because he was a Chilim Chalonis. 
and the brothers were opposed to um, dreamers because they were they wanted to be Isaac in Nevoa. So the fact that Yosef is having dreams and thinks that dreams are the way to go means there's something wrong with him. Not a very Jewish thing to do. That's basically what's going on over there. So when it says in Micha, that was the Cheshbon. Now in Micha Paragimel, Micha Paragimel is directed against the Achim. And I'll show you, I'm not going to show you every single Remez, but we'll, I'll show you some of them. So Shimuna is, who said that again? Yosef said that, right? Going around the Pesach. And the Medjur says that Yosef is telling him, this is what the Nevi'im are going to tell you one day. They're going to tell you Shimuna. And what the message to the Achim is, don't you know Mishpat? You should know Mishpat. You've consumed the flesh of my nation and you skinned them the fact that you sold Yosef for money means you don't know Mishpat. You guys claim, so in other words, did Shvatim claim to be superior to Yosef because they're the ones who, who have Das Hashem and aren't going to be Nevi'im. And the Navi tells them, by selling Yosef, you showed that you're far from Hashem. Hashem is going to hide from you. So here you come and you sell Yosef, because you stand for Nevoa, but by doing this, you show that you don't know Mishpat, you don't know Mishpat Hashem is going to hide from you. And then the next passage talks about the Nevi'im who fool the people. That means false Nevi'im. You claim to be Nevi'im, you claim to be Nevi'im, but you're really not Nevi'im. It's going to come dark, you're not going to have Chazan, you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to know, the, you're not going to have Nevoa, the kids are, right? In man elikim. So this is directed against the Shvatim, and then you look in Pasuk Tess. I'm going to go back to Pasuk Tess in a second. Shimon Razois, Rashi Beis Yaakov, Kutzina Beis Yaakov, Masa'av and Mishpat, Eskalei Shei Yaakeshu. So basically, the Rashi Beis Yaakov is in Shvatim. And you claim, look at Pasuk Yedaf, you claim, Hashem Bekirbeinu, Lo Yisav Yalei Nural. It means the Shvatim's argument was, Hashem is Bekirbeinu. Yosef believed that Hashem is far away, and that's why you have to have dreams. And this is something I'm not going to go into now. That's why you have to have dreams, because Nevu is when Hashem is close. And you guys, the Shvatim, you think Hashem Bekirbeinu and everything's fine, but by acting this way to Yosef, you make Hashem Taka disappear, make him be master himself, um, which is what you're against in the first place, and you lose the Nevoa. Okay? And then Apostle Chesed says, This is Micha speaking. I, Micha, am filled with power with the Ruach Hashem, who Mishpat to Gvur, I have the Mishpat, and I could tell Yaakov is Pesha and Yisrael is Chatos. So basically, the Achim, as great as they were, they also lost the Ruach Hashem, right? And you notice he says, he says in Pasuk Zion, Ein ma'anei kim. Hashem is not going to respond to you. Yosef said to Pirate, Kim ya'an So ya- Yaakov is out because he's Bitzar, so he doesn't have the Ruach Hashem. And the brothers are out, as Micha says, you don't have ma'anei you're not, you're not, You don't speak for Hashem anymore because, what, because of what you did to Yosef, you lost your... You lost your ability to talk to Hashem. Okay, so Pari is not making a mistake. He's making one mistake. We'll get to it soon. His mistake is Yosef doesn't have it either in some way. But the fact that the that Yaakov and the and the Achim don't have it, that is borne out by Pasuk in Vayigash and the Pasuk in Micha. Okay, clear. Now I just want to show you some things in this Pasuk in here. Who's Katsini Beis Yisrael? Uh, Katsini Beis Yisrael are the leaders. That's what it means. The, the Katsin means like a leader. Again, the point is, of course, Micha's talking to his generation, but the, but 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 it's Nidrash, as Chazal do, on the Shvatim. Where the Rashi Yaakov and the Katsin of Yisrael. Okay, I want to just say... Okay, I'm going to skip the next point because it has to do with a lot of things we discussed in the past. I'll just say Pekitzer because for the record, and Sean will, will know what I'm talking about, that here it says, in Micha it says, in Ma'ane Kim. There's no Ma'ane, so we said, okay, and Yosef mm-hmm. promises a Lekim Ya'ane. And there it says in Pasuk Dalet, Oz Yizak Vel Hashem Velo Ya'ane Oisem Ve'yaster Ponov. Hashem won't answer and he will hide his face. So this is like it says, En Chobeseser Ram, in, in Tum Pe'al, which we've a lot. And in Yirmiya, where he's in jail, and Hashem tells him, Kro'i live e'eneko. So there's the Aniyah, but the Shvatim don't get the Aniyah. 
Okay, and in Pasuk Hey, where it talks about the Nevi'im Hamasim Es Ami, they lead the people astray. The Masim Es Ami. They don't want the true Rach. In Yeshaya Perak Yotes, which talks about the Chach Yotan losing their ability to, to guide Mitzrayim correctly, it repeats a few times, Hisu Es Mitzrayim. Yeshaya Perak Yotes, Pasuk Yudalid, it says, Hisu Es Mitzrayim, they lead Mitzrayim astray. Ta. And this we had in Yerim Yerapak Chav Gimel, where he talks about between dreamers and true Nevi'im, talks about the true people who have dreams and masim the nation, Vayas Uas Ami, and Yosef was Toya Basoda, and that's why the Shvatim said, you're Toya, that means you don't have the right word of Hashem. Okay, fine, say that. Now, so what is Yosef claiming? So what is Pari claiming? Pari claims that Yosef is only one that is Ruach Likim. Right? We could look the planet from end, one end of the world to the other, we will not find someone, an ish, that has a ruach halikim. Okay, so this idea that Yosef has the ruach halikim, he's a special person, as we haven't done yet. Also, Nebuchadnezzar Netzah said he's a man that has ruach halikim kadishin bay. Okay, now I want remember Daniel. He said well, we have this nimtza. The nimtza they couldn't they couldn't find such people. And remember the other passage in Daniel where it says that by yimtza aim eser yodais. Right, that was in Daniel Perak Aleph Pasuk Chav. It says, "V'chol devar chach mas bina shabikish mehem amelach vayim tzayim eser yodis." I'll call a chatumim ma'ashafim. Right? And you know where else we have this expression, eser yodis? Ah, there's a chomesh yodis. Chomesh yodis, right? Okay, that's interesting. But there's a place where it says Esayodis. And Esayodis is in Shmuel Bey's Perik Yud Tes. The story was that Avshalom rebelled against the king. Right? Against David. And then they put down the rebellion. And then there was a fellow Sheva ben Bichri. And they had to take care of that first. Right? Actually, this is pre Sheva ben Bichri. Okay, so this is Shmuel Bey's Perik Yud Tes. Now, a lot of people followed up Shalom, and now they all came back to David. And there's a whole fight between Yehuda and Yisrael, who's going to be the first one to deal with, to help David. So this is in Pasuk Mandal. I have ten times that you have in the Melech. I have ten times that you have, right? Because the ten Shvatim, as opposed to the one shave at Yehuda, the young man, I guess, on the fence. I don't know why he doesn't count for some reason. Maybe he wasn't here. Whatever. Maybe what? Maybe he wasn't counting. Maybe he was counting Yosef as one. Maybe he was counting. Yosef is one, and maybe and maybe is not is not a worry. Ah, ah, ah. maybe Levi's not counted. Okay, so it's ten to one, right? So ten to one. So so why is Matu Hekilo Sani? So when Yos when Pari said about Yosef Hanim Tzachaze Isha Shiruach Lekim and he's ignoring the ten Shvatim. Like it says in Daniel, right? Because uh, if he says, that means he's treating Yosef as being because really, it's 10 against 1. But he's treating Yosef, can they get cool on? Because uh, if they sold Yosef, they lost the work. Okay, you got that? David, you follow? What's the, Daniel's continuation of Yosef? Daniel, yeah, Daniel. Yeah, he stands as a shade. No, 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 no. In Daniel, it says that he was 10 times as wise as the Khatum. That's all it says. But I'm just making Xer Shava. The hero talks about finding Ruach HaLakim. Hanimtza, could we find such a person? And Daniel also finds such a person. Could we find such a person? And Daniel is like the Yosef story because he's someone in Golas and many parallels. And he becomes a very important person in the king's court because, specifically because he can interpret dreams. And there it talks about whether what they found. And what they found is, it says they didn't find such a chacham, and it says by yimtzeim eser yodis. So to Yosef, because Yosef, because Paris said yimtzeh chazeshu v'chalikim, and ignore the ten other people who are who are candidates for that. So clearly, so if he's treating Yosef as being eser yodis, and it's those eser yodis which which I use that same expression is used for the ten shvatim against one. There it's ten against Yehuda. Here it's here it's ten against Yosef, which is very appropriate because Yosef is becoming the king, and that's the whole debate: who's going to be king? Here Yosef is becoming the king, so he's the he's the one who's. You know, the Asiyadis is he's being treated as Asiyadis because the other Shvatim didn't support his kingdom and he's the whole problem was that they didn't support him being king, right? 
So the whole title that, okay, there's 10 to 1 in the king, but not by Yosef, because by, by not supporting his kingdom, they, 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 they took themselves out of that picture of, of the Ruch HaLikim that Yosef was working on. And they, and they lost whatever Ruch HaLikim they had. Okay? By the way, the fact that the Shvatim lost the Ruch HaLikim, we spoke about this really all the way in the beginning of the story, where it says, where it says, by Yisru Enem, by Yiru, Behine Ech HaSishmei and Bambi Gila. That's a very strange passage. They picked up their eyes and saw in the Ech and Bambi Gila. Like, okay, so what's the big deal? By Yisru Enem, by Yiru. What we showed was, what we showed was, in, in, in a few places, that, that this, that this, by Yisru Enem, by Yiru, was like this. It says in Amos, the, the few places where the Nevi'im were tested, Hashem showed them something and said, what do you see? And almost it says Hashem sold him a basket of, of summer fruits, and he said, "What do you see? Klov kayets, klov kayets, a basket of summer fruits, and that's a simon that boha kates, and I'm not going to forgive Klayet so for selling the poor person for shoes, which is the remnant of So when they picked up their eyes and saw, it was a test whether they're going to see a klov kayets and no boha kates and know that they're in big trouble for selling Yosef, or they're going to see nechayis tzivalait. Kids, it was a test that they weren't going to be in. It was a test that they weren't going to be in. And the other time it was a test is also Makal Shaki. It's also connected, okay? Rabbanim, the point is that the Shvatim failed at, at being Nevi'im. That's the point of the Apostle. By selling Yosef, they, they lost their ability to see properly, to be good Nevi'im. Okay, so basically, so far, we're taking Pai's word for it, that Yosef has a Ruach king, and no one else does, right? But I want to say, I want to show you that it gets, it gets a little deeper than this, because... Of course, we shouldn't take Parai's word for it, right? I meaning, meaning, it's Parai who's asserting um, Yesus' greatness, right? So let me show you what's going on in Yeshaya. Here we're going to look closely at Yeshaya. Parak, um, let's start a Parak of Tess. Let's start at the end of Parak of Tess. There's a lot of psukim here we have to put together, and we spoke about these in the past weeks, but I think you'll get the idea. Let's start with the end of Perak of Tess, Pesach of Bez. It says, Yaakov is not going to be embarrassed anymore. When he sees his children, when he sees his children, so Yaakov is going to reach the point where he doesn't have Busha, <coughs> and that's when he... Um, and that's when he sees his children, okay? When he sees his children. The Yadu Toye Ruach Bina. The Toye Ruach, we spoke about the Toye Basod and the Masa Meshmi. The Toye Ruach, those who claim to have Ruach but don't really Toye, are going to have Bina. Fine, what are we talking about? So look at little Perak Lamed. Talks about the Bonim Serim who, who do have an idea and don't ask Hashem. Ha'herchum Loredes Mitzayim Opi Loi Sha'olu. Those who go to take refuge by Paray. The Mois of Paray is going to be a Busha. So again, what do we have over here? There's a Busha. The Busha is that you think Paray is strength. Right? And that's an Eitzah that's not from Hashem. And that, as Pasuk Aleph says, That's not Hashem's Ruach. To go down to Mitzrayim and think that Mitzrayim is going to save you is not Hashem's Ruach. And the Toy Ruach are going to learn Bina, then the Pech of Tess, and that's when the Yaakov sees his children. Okay? Fine. So now I'll tell you what this means. What it means is as follows. Take, go, let's go back a little bit. Go back to Perak of Zion. Let's talk about this. We talk about this a lot in the past year. Perak of Zion, Pasuk Hey. O Yachazik v'mo'uzi ya'asa sholem li, sholem ya'asa li. So this is the Mois of Hashem. The Mois of Hashem is Shalim. Habayim Yashvesh Yaakov, those are going to come down and is going to, Yaakov is going to take root. And Yotzit Sephora Chisor. So Yaakov is going to come down from the time and take root there. And there's the Mois of Hashem, which is Shalim. The Mois of Hashem is Shalim. And the Mois of Mitzrayim, of Paray, as we learned so in Paraglam, is Boishas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not bushes now. No, right, right. The Moe's power leads to bushes. Exactly, right. The Moe's power ends up failing. Right. The Moe's power ends, to, ends up failing, and therefore it's not Shalom. And the Mozi, the Moe's of Hashem, if you take strength in Hashem, that leads to Shalom. Okay? That's the of Zion, Pasuk, Hey, and Vav. We spoke a lot about this Pesukim 
Show him the, is it the opposite of Moshe's. Um, I don't know. At least, uh, yeah, I mean, what we're looking for is Shalom. The Moshe's power is because you need Shalom to protect you from something. And yeah, in this case, in this case, it's contrasting the Moshe's power, which would be Moshe's, and the Moshe's of Hashem, which is Shalom. Now, Yosef told Parah the Kimya'an Eshelem Parah. Before he even heard what Parah had to say, this is very significant, we spoke about this a lot. Before he even heard what Parah has to say, he told him, everything is going to be fine. Now, first of all, why, why is he doing that? Because I'm a spal b'shalim 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 Because otherwise, it's just a chayim b'loi, which is a remez. Undoubtedly, it's a remez from this dream to be about Tevlana. Parah swallowing up each other means there could be a lot of chaos and, and, and what's it called? And the civil strife, if, unless there's shown. Yosef is in Gullus, so he has to, he has to be mispala b'shalim 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 So, I mean, Yosef is committed to the shalim parah, he tells him the dream's gonna be fine. He has no dreams gonna be fine because he's committed. He committed himself to Shloim Parah because he's in Mitzrayim and he needs, or at least he thinks he needs, he thinks he needs Mitzrayim to be powerful because he's there. And if Mitzrayim falls apart, then it's gonna be very major trouble. Now, we spoke about this a lot. The Emmys is, the Vim say, Mitzrayim should have fallen, fallen apart, meaning if Yosef would not have interpreted the dream and wouldn't have told him the Eitzah, He's either if he wouldn't have interpreted the dream, or if he wouldn't have told the Eitz, then the time would have been over. And this was an opportunity from time to end, and maybe it should have ended. Whole story about that. What should have happened? But Yosef, by guaranteeing Shlaim Parai, because he feels that he's invested in Mitzrayim, so he changed, changed the course of history. And the Nevi'im are very unhappy about that. And this is one of the places, because the sh- true Shalom is to be Machzik in the Moiz of Hashem. Yosef is promising Shalom to Mitzrayim, so that's like it says in the beginning of Parak Lamid, you're going down to Mitzrayim, the Loi Ruchi. You're not asking Hashem. You're taking Moi's Paroi. You're not asking Hashem. You're not asking Hashem. You're doing something that you think you have to do. What does it mean? He thinks he has to do it because he's a Gullus. It means he thinks he has to be a Gullus kind of person and not, not speak to Hashem, not hear the word of Hashem. And that's really going to end up being Baishas. Okay, now if you look also in Perak of Zion, we spoke a lot about these Pesukim, but I'll just tell you one of the things. Pa, Pari said to Yosef in the next Pesuk in, in Parashas Mikates, Ein novo in right? Which is a very nice thing. But what the Nevi'im do is that they play on, well, it's a little, again, it's Pari saying in novo So you got to take this with a grain of salt. Pari says Ein novo in So what do the Nevi'im do? The Nevi'im take this Pesuk and they say, Ein novo and Ein chacham. And I'll show you, this is in Parakal Zion. I'll read some of the Pesukim, okay? Let's start, I'll read some of the Pesukim so you should get the sense of what's going on. Let's start Parakal Zion, Pesukim. So you have to hold on to the Moiz of Hashem, and that's going to be Shalom. Then those who come down to the time will take root. Then they're gonna, everything's going to be perfect. Okay. And then in Pesukim, it talks about the Ruach Kasha of Hashem on the Yom Kodim. There's a Ruach Kasha, there's a, there's a Ruach, there's a storm, stormy wind of Hashem. That's called Hashem's storm. The, the, the Kadim is called the Ruach Hashem. We'll see soon it says Naishem. The Kadim is called the Ruach Hashem. And, and there's a Ruach Kasha that's coming against Mitzrayim in the Yom Kadim. That's the Shtufa's Kadim. There's a remez to the fact that there's a Ruach Hashem that's out to get Mitzrayim. Okay? And you look at Pasuk. Let's skip to Pasuk. Get Aleph. Bivosh Ktsira Tisha Varna. When the Kotsira is dry, let it break. There's nothing more about Basel and Zafram that you're supposed to let the, the Goyim fall. Don't support their kingdom. When the katsir is dry, let it break. That means when Yosef, when Yosef saw that there's a dream that the katsir is going to dry, he shouldn't have tried to save it. Ki loy ambino yisu. Ah, ain't nothing to chacham kamaycha. Yes, says Yishaya, loy ambino yisu. Because what Yosef did was a lack of bina because he was saving the time when he should have been bivosh katsir at the Shavar. He should have let it fall down. V'hoya bayom hu yachbo et Hashem v'shbelas ha'ad nachem mitzrayim. Atam to look to l'achad echad b'nei Yisrael. You don't belong there in Mitzrayim. You're the Tvua that Hashem wants. The Tvua of Mitzrayim, Shataka, um, dry up and break. And you're going, you're going to be taken out. So Yosef is acting like he belongs in Mitzrayim, right? Because he thinks, look, I'm in Mitzrayim. That's Shlem Shalom. I have to take care of Mitzrayim. But really, that's, that's a lack of Bina. That's Loyam Bina Su. Okay? Now, I want to take you one more place. Maybe two more places. One of them is in Isha'ya, the end of Isha'ya. There it talks about the Bain Loichacham. 
This is a Shea Perak Yud Gimel, Pasuk Yud Gimel. It talks about the Avoin Ephraim, and that Ephraim is a Bain Loi Chocham. And he's a Bain Ephraim, this is obviously Yosef's children. So Perak Yud Gimel, Pasuk Yud Gimel, he's a Bain Loi Chocham. And in Pasuk Tezvav, it talks about the Ruach, the Kodim, which is the Ruach Hashem, which is going to come and destroy Ephraim. And we spoke about this. The reason why is like this, because, because what happened was there was a Shtufa's Kodim, there was a, it was a, um, there was, in Paris' dream, he dreamt that there was Shtufa's Kodim, right? Let me, I'll tell you the kids here. Pari had two dreams. One dream he said, he had the, pack, the cows, and he said, Leroy Isi Kahinim Palach Tzayim Leroy. He couldn't understand where they came from. But when he saw the, um, the Tvua, that was Shtufa's Kodim, that he wasn't surprised. That he was not shocked about. He didn't say, I never saw such bad Tvua. Okay? Why? Because it was Shtufa's Kodim, and we have the Kodim is operates in the time. The Ruach HaKodim the Ruach HaKodim took the Yamsuf, and the Ruach HaKodim is the Ruach Hashem. So that's something the power could be massive, that the Ruach Hashem could come and make and, and lay waste to Mitzrayim, that power could that power understood that Mitzrayim. Okay? What the Navi over here says is that the Ruach, the Kodim, which is the Ruach Hashem, is going to come back on Ephraim and destroy Ephraim. And it calls Ephraim a bain loy chacham. So what that means is like this, because Yosef who was ain't not loy chacham. What Yosef did, and I'm not going to go into this whole because it's a whole lot of riches. What Yosef did when he interpreted Paris dreams, he said, you know why you saw a Ruach Hashem, the Kadim, in your dream? Because I am the Ruach Hashem who's going to interpret the dream for you. That's my mamoska. But really, really the message of the Ruach Kadim is destroy Mitzrayim. Let Mitzrayim come to an end. That was Yosef's interpretation. Yosef's interpretation was the Ruach Kadim, which is the Ruach Hashem, is me. Because I'm speaking to the Ruach of the King. Yosef is in the first dream because he saw... Um, Parais, if a toy, if a mara, and the Chazal say Ben Paras Yosef, and Yosef is if a toy, if a mara, and Batarena Baochu is like Yosef Royas Echov, and in the second dream, with the Ruach Kadim, Yosef is also there, because Yosef says, I am the Ruach Kadim. But really, Sid and the VM, Yosef could have let Mitzrayim fall and be destroyed. And, and he's a Bain Loy Chacham, because if Paris is telling you you're, you're Navam Bachacham, it means you're really not Navam Bachacham. That's the whole point. So therefore, the Pasuk is in Navam Bachacham, and then the VM say, Loy Ambinus, and Loy Bain Loy Bain Loy Chacham. And, and, that's bec- and therefore, the Ruach Kadim is going to come back on, on Yosef. Okay? So, the point is like this. I'm just, my point is, when, ya- when Pari said, okay, the Hanum to Chazay, Eshesh, Ruch, Halakim, Boy, so we show Yaakov doesn't count, and the Achim don't count. But the truth is, it's only Pari, meaning, and it's not, let's put, I will say, let's say it like this, only Pari says Yosef has the Ruch, Halakim. What does that mean? He did have a Ruch, Halakim. Yitako interpreted a dream in an amazing way. But what it means is like this. The reason why the, the Kayach of Yosef to interpret the dream in this way, he was working on Paris' terms, right? He was he was said, I'm gonna work with Shlaim Paris. What that means is like this. That means I'm accepting the whole Mitzrayim worldview, the whole whatever, the whole thing. I'm accepting the Mitzis of Mitzrayim and the whole Holy Kalich. I'm gonna support that. And within that, I'm gonna be the Maestro of Isha Shuruch Alikim. Okay, say that, but you're, you're the Isha Shuruch Alikim within the Mitzrayim world. That means that if you look from the Nevi'im's perspective, in a pure world, we reject the whole Mitzrayim, then we, we don't call you the Shashim Kim. You don't deserve to have the Ruch Kim. You, you're only within the framework of Mitzrayim. So just to review, and we spoke about this a lot, it doesn't mean that Yosef, could Yosef have done differently? Should he have done differently? I don't know. He was in Mitzrayim. So in Mitzrayim, he had to do, he had to, like the Chazal said, Mispal Shalom Shemachas, Yishim Bloy. You have to Mispal Shalom Shemachas, right? That means it could be a corrupt Machas, but you have to get on its side. But the Nevi'im are going to say, are going to say it's corrupt. Say that you're, you're there. So Yosef is in Golos. So he's acting one way. And the Nevi'im are not in Golos. are telling you what's wrong with that. And he's wrong to be in Golos. It's a very terrible thing. It messes things up. And this is why it messes things up. Because you have to get on the side. Time also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm making the drush. I don't care. I'm, not, I'm talking about the drush. I'm saying the I fact. Did. Yeah, I'm saying the fact that the Daesh is this boss. Like, he's supposed to read it as a drush. Right, I'm talking about the day. Right. If the drush is correct. You want to think about the drush. You can read drush. But if the drush is correct, like all the whole time, then we have to look at the idea of it. So the point is that yeah, Pari says that you're Shuruch Halakim Bay, and that suggests that uh, maybe he doesn't have the, does, he shouldn't have the Ruach, or he doesn't really, he's not really a Bailam of the Ruach, because it's only from Pari's perspective that he has the Ruach. Okay, I want to show you one last Pasuk. He's only a dreamer, not a Navi. What? He's only a dreamer, not a Navi. Right, it's interesting. Tagum says Ruach Nevuah, right? And Ram Ben Aram says a very interesting Lush, and he says Ruach Nevuah is not Nevuah Gemurah, it's Kayach Nevuah. You know, the Rambam is very, you know, exact what the levels of Nebu are. And the Rambam says, 
It's a koyach. I think that's a lot. It's a koyach nevuah, but not nevuah mamish, not nevuah gemura. It's interesting. Okay, I want to show you one last pasuk, and this is in Kehelas. This is in Kehelas. Perek. We'll start from Perek Yudal, because really this drushes about Kehelas Neged Yosef starts in the middle of Perek Yud, and it goes on and on and on and on. But we'll start. It starts somewhere. So I'll start from Perek Yudal. This is Yosef telling Pare, you have to save the bread. Okay? The seven years, going to be seven years of hunger, and then there's going to be, uh, seven years of saiva, but then there's going to be an eighth year, which can be hunger. So you don't know. Okay. So I'm not going to go into all the drushes now, but I wanted to show you one thing. In Pazak K, it says, Ka'atzomim betamot 